I am now going to present a brief overview of the laureate's work. The area of mathematics rewarded by this year's prize combines the twin fields of discrete mathematics and theoretical computer science. Discrete maths is the maths of discrete things, that is, of things that are separate and distinct as opposed to continuous. For example, the maths of graphs, which are structures like this one, with vertices joined together by edges. One of the most famous problems in graph theory is how many colours does it take to colour a map such that no two regions that share a border have the same colour? This counts as graph theory since maps are analogous to a particular type of graph. For example, we can colour the counties of Norway using only three colours. But if we want to colour the states of the United States, we require four colours because of the pattern around Nevada. No two-dimensional map requires more than four colours. Now, let's consider this map, which has a few thousand regions. Is it colourable with three or four colours, such that no two regions sharing a border have the same colour? It sounds like a computer should be able to find the answer quite easily. Wrong. This is a very hard problem. So hard, in fact, that even if we ask the world's most powerful computer, we may not get the answer before the Earth is absorbed by the sun. In the language of theoretical computer science, the map colouring problem is an NP problem, which means very hard to solve, but easy to verify. It's easy to verify because once we're given a three colouring of our map, it's easy to check. We just inspect every border. NP problems and the sister concept P problems, which are the problems that are both easy to solve and easy to verify, are concepts that were formulated in the 1970s. They gave rise to a new field within theoretical computer science that concerned itself with the scope and efficiency of algorithms. The greatest open problem in this field is whether it is possible, with the invention of better algorithms, to turn NP problems into P problems. That is, is P equal to NP? Or is P not equal to NP? If P is equal to NP, then instead of taking millions of years to work out whether you can colour my map with three colours, you might be able to do it in a few minutes. The P versus NP conundrum provides early context for much of the work honoured by this year's Arbel Prize. The first laureate, Laszlo Lovas, was born in Hungary. As a teenager in the mid-1960s, he won gold medals at three consecutive International Mathematical Olympiads. His early interest was combinatorics, the maths of patterns and counting patterns. During the 1970s, he realised that this area could address fundamental questions in the rapidly growing field of computer science. His work has established crucial connections between discrete maths and theoretical computer science. Lovas has designed powerful algorithms with wide-ranging applications, particularly in cybersecurity. One of his algorithms, the LLL lattice reduction algorithm, is the basis for what are currently the only known encryption systems that can withstand an attack by a quantum computer. The second laureate, Avi Vigdesen, born in Israel, has an academic background in computer science. One of the major themes of his work is investigating the role of randomness within computation. Algorithms that use randomization, that is, the simulation of a coin toss, are often extremely powerful. One of Vigdesen's favourite concepts, and the one I will focus on now, is the zero-knowledge proof. This is a method in which I can prove something without revealing any information beyond the validity of the claim, hence zero-knowledge. It sounds ludicrous that I can prove something to you without revealing any of the details, but I can. Let's return to this map. And let's say that I have discovered a way to colour it in using only three colours in the way that I described previously, meaning that no two regions that share a border have the same colour. I can use a zero-knowledge proof to prove to you that I have discovered a way to colour it with three colours without revealing any information at all about the way I coloured it in. Briefly, I'll show you how it's done. Before I start, some basics. If I have discovered one way to colour my map with three colours, I've actually discovered six ways, because there are six ways of arranging three colours. Here are the six possible permutations of three colours. My zero-knowledge proof begins like this. 
I'm going to explain using a small segment of my map. First, I randomly choose one of the six ways of colouring my map with three colours. I then place an envelope in every region. Inside each envelope is a note that describes the colour of that region according to the colouring that I chose. Now, I invite you, that's the person to whom I want to prove that I have a three-colour colouring of the map, to choose any two regions sharing a border and to open the envelopes in these two regions. For example, these two. Because I have coloured the map with three colours such that no regions sharing a border have the same colour, it is guaranteed that the colours in the two envelopes will be different. You will never open both envelopes and find a fourth colour or two identical colours. Once you have checked the two envelopes, I go through the process again. I randomly choose one of the six colourings. I place an envelope in each region that contains the colour of that region according to the colouring that I chose. Again, you choose two regions sharing a border and open their envelopes. And again, they will reveal different colours. We can continue this game. Every time you will open envelopes with different colours. Eventually, you will be convinced that I have been able to colour my map with three colours such that no neighbours share the same colour. Most importantly, I will have convinced you without revealing any information at all about my colourings, since at every stage the colours chosen were always randomly generated. In other words, if I am able to colour a map with three colours, I am able to prove the statement to you without giving you any information at all on how it was done. Vigdeson and his collaborators generalised the above method to show that every true mathematical statement has a zero knowledge proof. Remarkably, I can prove anything to you without giving a shred of evidence beyond the validity of my claim. This idea is now very useful in cyber security, where two people may want to establish trust without sharing information. Zero knowledge proofs are but one of the many wonderful mathematical innovations from the huge body of work honoured by the Arbel Prize 2021. Thanks to Laszlo Lovas and Avi Vigdesen, discrete mathematics and theoretical computer science are now established as central areas of modern mathematics.